So obviously, that's an extreme exaggeration, but hopefully I can encourage you if you're still considering going back to school. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm just kidding. It really has been going well for as well as school can go, I guess. But um, I am really thankful and grateful to be taking advantage of Starbucks ASU program, also known as SCAP. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my personal experience with Starbucks, their ASU online program benefit, the application process, uh, picking a major and enrolling in classes, the work-life balance, and then lastly, my experience with online learning at ASU thus far. I'm going to cover what I think are the most important parts of my experience, but I'm not an official rep for Starbucks or ASU, so I still suggest you do your own research and speak to your local manager. So in Hawaii, you only need a total of 80 hours part-time a month in order to apply for the Starbucks benefit. And once you hit 80 hours after your first month, you're already eligible. However, in other states in the U.S., I believe you have to work a total of 80 hours every month for a consecutive six months before you're eligible for the SCAP benefit program. Again, please talk to your local manager if you have further questions. So Starbucks pays 100% of your tuition after any grants or scholarships that you get. As of summer or fall 2021, which is like the semester right when I was trying to apply, thank God, um, you no longer have to pay for your tuition first. Starbucks now pays your tuition up front. Sick! So yep, that's right. You no longer have to pay for your tuition and then get a reimbursement from Starbucks. Starbucks will now pay the tuition up front as long as you're in the eligible status. Again, meeting that 80 hours a month requirement. You only have to pay Starbucks back if you don't pass your classes with a C or higher. As of the release date of this video, okay, hold on. Now let me, because this is a bunch of logistics, let me just read it off my script. Be aware that total tuition coverage above $5,250 in a calendar year Year will be reported as taxable income but it's still such a worthwhile benefit because you do also get some scholarships so there's the cap university grant and college achievement plan scholarship which are both money that do not count towards that five thousand two hundred and fifty dollars the earlier you fill out your fafsa the higher your financial aid can be as well so be sure to get that fafsa in early So as you've probably guessed, my application process didn't go exactly as depicted in the intro of my video. There was definitely a lot more waiting. Anticipation. Nervousness about actually getting in. And way more self-doubt. I'm probably not the only one who tends to over-exaggerate the possible negatives on things that I actually care about. Things like my list of qualities. If my credits expired since it's been almost 10 years since I've been in school. And if I have to retake my SATs and then fail miserably because it's been so long since I've been in school. But all in all, it really was a simple process that literally took me maybe 15 to 20 minutes. The ASU website says that you should give the application process about 30 minutes, which is ample time to fill it out in my personal opinion. There wasn't an essay portion or anything like that for me, but I was technically transferring in, so I'm not too sure if it's a slightly different process for incoming first-time college students. I then had to fill out a FAFSA, which was also a really quick process if you filled out your taxes before. You're allowed to autofill all of your tax information by connecting to the IRS. And lastly, I had to request my transcripts from previous schools, but the Starbucks and ASU advisor that I, they had connected me to made it really simple and gave me like a link, the link that I was supposed to go to to request those transcripts. So all of the information's in there and they were really helpful with that process. And then, I waited. What really helped was that there was an ASU rep specifically for those interested in utilizing the SCAP program through Starbucks. And if it wasn't for 
This advisor who kept me up to date on the process of my application and followed up with me to see if I finished applying, sent in my FAFSA, and requested my transcripts, then I probably would have still held off on actually applying and waited even longer, honestly, because that's just how nervous I was to do it. So I applied on May 30th, 2021, and I got accepted on July 13th of 2021. Sick! I think I could have heard back sooner, but I waited like two weeks after I applied to request my transcripts. So there's that. <laughs> ASU Online has 133 undergraduate programs available, so there's a wide variety of degrees to choose from. You don't have to declare a degree right away, so you do have freedom while you're undecided. Everything has been pretty user-friendly, integrative, and overall efficient for incoming students. And once admitted, I set up an appointment with an academic advisor who walked me through my course list and set me up with the best course that I should take for the first half of my semester. A personal tip, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you keep a calendar specifically just for coursework and quizzes and tests and things all related to ASU, especially if you're taking classes in the expedited learning sessions. Assignments and quizzes come quickly, even more so if you're also balancing a job or two. A separate calendar just for my schoolwork to see the due dates at a glance for the whole month was super crucial and such a game changer for me. ASU even sets you up with a success coach as a resource if in case you do struggle with work-life balance and or run into a life or mental crisis. I was really worried that going back to school after all these years was going to be really rough, especially considering I dropped out because I was just a really horrible and uncommitted student. I think that this time around, however, since I am more mature and I actually have a focus to finish school and do well in it, it's actually going a lot better than I had thought. I was someone who thought I was never gonna go back to school, like ever. But then earlier this year, God told me to go back. I still don't even really know why he asked me to go back or what he's going to use my degree for, but I don't really need to know because I trust him. Whenever I've put my faith in him and obeyed, it's always worked out for my good when I look back and compare where he's brought me from. I know that wherever he's taking me is the best possible thing I could work towards because what he has planned and purposed for me are not meant to hurt me. It is out of this reverence to serve God that I've been able to have a more positive attitude about going back to school. I even have an A in my class right now when I was worried I was going to do horribly. When we walk in the will of God, he will provide all of our needs and give us the comfort we need to persevere. So whether you're thinking about going back to school or just trying to walk in better obedience to the Lord, I pray that God's truth and peace comforts you in the way that you should go. As always, may God's peace be the journey.